look at your little faces. I've been listening to you, organising each other. <laughs> um, Andrew's muted you all, not because we don't love you all, but just because then you can concentrate on what I'm doing. <laughs> and I need to concentrate on what I'm doing as well, to be fair. Um, just a couple, a little bit of housekeeping. So we're going to teach, I'm going to teach you how to make a stepper card on your scan and cut uh, today got all the instructions written out and I will get them typed up and we'll put them on our website as a download. So if you don't want to keep watching the video, you can do that. Give me a few days because I'm like here with work. Um, and we are going to announce the winner of the Scan and Cut giveaway that we were, we've been running for the past month. So we'll do that at the end of this, um, of this class. I also want to do just a cheeky little thing, which is to tell you all that on Friday at 6 p.m., Cutting Craft Dorian is coming back. Yay! I know, I know, right? So excited. Um, we started kind of where we left off. So we've done 20 boxes with 30 patterns and I'm going to show you loads of stuff. You can do that. In fact, I'm recording education for that tomorrow. So it will be available by the time this goes live. And 10 construction pieces. So cutting out of grey board. And I'm going to show you how the best way to cut grey board on your scan and cut. So that launches on Friday at 6 o'clock. If it goes anything like the Quirky Bird one with the Minecraft Studio, you'll need to be quick because <laughs> that sold out ridiculously quickly. And thank you very much. I've heard a few of you saying that you bought it. So I'm really pleased about that. We're also going to convert the Fairy Godmother, which was the one that we didn't put on the USB. So we're going to convert it to SVG files on Minecraft Studio for you. And you'll buy it as a digital download from Highlight Crafts, which will be really good. Um, rather than waiting another six months, we thought, you know what, you've loved it, let's let's do that. Right, let's get started. So SDX, we don't need to go into Canvas Workspace to do a stepper on this, which is really good. Um, CM users do, because you've got the offset function and they don't. And it doesn't matter which machine you've got, which SDX you've got, it will work with all of them. So if you've, I know someone said they just had an SDX 900 delivered. Congratulations. It's like having a new family member come through the door. Um, and you'll probably learn a lot from this class, but it might be a little bit too, not advanced, because I don't want to, I don't know where you're at in your journey. But as a new SDX user, I would go back and start at class one and work your way up to, up to this. Absolutely still watch this, because we'll have seen you. But go back and watch class one, just because some of the icons are slightly different and they're in a different place. So it will give you that starting point which will be good right so the first thing we need to do when we're designing a stepper card and i've actually once i've designed it i've drawn it out so that you can see it so we're going to start with this rectangle here all right so that's the really simple basic bit so i've done it as long as i can height wise on a 12 by 12 mat you could go onto a 12 by 24 and you could also make it wider and you would then just adjust the lines on where they go but I thought it was a really nice thing to do I've never made a stepper card so this was new to me and I did it for my um one of my quirky bird demos so I thought you know what let's try it and see how we get on so if I keep looking down here it's because I've got my instructions in front of me because I wanted to make sure that it was right for you so first thing we're going to do is select a rectangle or a square because we're going to change the height and width anyway so it can be either so to do that we're going to go into our patterns into our basic shapes and i'm just going to choose a square because i might as well because it's the first one there i'm going to separate the height and the width here so i'm going to unlock the aspect ratio which is this button here and i'm going to make it 296 millimeters high so as tall as I can go on my mat. So just press the plus button. One thing you will like, the lady who said she's just had a SDX 900 delivered, is that if you're making something bigger, you don't need to, or you're rotating it, you don't need to move it away from the edge of the screen. So 296 high by 178 millimeters wide. So I'm just going to press that and that will give me and this was just because I made it the size that I needed it to be for my card base. So you could change this if you wanted to. So then we're going to set that on the mat and we've got our rectangle in place there. Okay. 
The next thing we need to do is select the straight line from the borders. So on the SDX, you've got a straight line and you've got a perforation line. You have on the CM900, but not on the other CM. So this is a good one to have. So we're going to select the straight line from the borders. So we're going to add, we're going to go into pattern. We're going to go into the borders. We go right down to the bottom by using that double arrow. So you'll see there's double arrows here that takes you either right to the top or right to the bottom. And then the individual arrows will take you up a page at a time. So if we pop up a couple of pages, we will see our straight line. So it's BOB001. In fact, I'm going to write that on here so that you know. I'm going to adjust my um, instructions as we go, just so that you know which one I'm using. That will be easier as well when we're doing the instructions. So we're going to select that and I'm going to set that on the mat. So I'm going to set that line and there it is at the top. First thing I'm going to do is go to edit and I'm going to go to object edit and I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees because I want it to be vertical. I'm then going to resize that. So I'm going to press OK and go into my resize button. And you'll see there's no width and there's no width because it's a line. It's not a shape. So that's absolutely, that's right. Don't expect the width to change because it won't. So all I need to do, I don't need to bother with the unlock aspect ratio. I just need to make that 148 millimeters. And that's just worked with the size that I've done. So rotate it so it's a vertical line, which we've already done. Duplicate the straight line so you have two and move one of them out of the way. So to do that, we press OK. We go to our duplicate button and behind there is the number. So we put it to two and we press OK. And I'm just gonna move that one out of the way. Select the rectangle and one of the straight lines. So we need to select the rectangle. We need to have one of the pieces that we're working with selected. We're gonna press OK and we're gonna multiple select part of the mat because we don't want this other straight line included. We're gonna drag the arrow over that second straight line so it can't see it, so it ignores it. And we're gonna select both of those pieces. We're going to align it to the bottom. So to do that, we press OK. We go to our directional arrows and we align it. So this is your alignment function at the top. We align it to the bottom. So wherever the straight line is, that's where it aligns to, so to the bottom and to the left. So it's now here. Now then, this is a bit where you have to do a bit of counting and I can't, have, I'm not going to apologize because this may, means that you can make a stepper card. So you've got to put a little bit of work into it. So if we tap, if we press OK and we tap the screen, you can see that we've got the straight line and we've got our rectangle. And don't forget, you can watch this back. So I know I'm going quite quickly, but you can watch it back and I'm going to put the written instructions up for you. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a deal really. And I have to go quite quickly because we do another class after this. So we want, what I want to do, and I'm just going to bring my picture back in here. So if we can go on the overhead, Andrew, that would be great. What we need to do is move this straight line up. Okay, so I've got, I've, I've worked out that if I bring this one in, this is what it looks like when it's all folded up like that. So if I open it out, we need the straight line to start further up because on a stepper card, you have the step bit at the bottom. Okay, so I drew it out and I worked it out. So I needed to come over 30 millimeters. So I've got a decent width here because if I want to create mat layers, I'm gonna go in and I don't want them to just be a thin line and I want it to come up by an inch. And however high you come up, you then repeat that with the next perforation line, okay? But the instructions, it's, it's super simple to follow. So what I need to do is move that straight line up 25 millimeters and in 30 millimeters. Now, because I know the scan and cut inside out, I've worked out that every nudge that you do on an SDX machine is half a millimeter. So we need to go up 25 millimeters. So we need to do 50 spaces and then we need to come in 30 millimeters. So that's 60 spaces. So there's a bit of counting. You can count along if you like. 
And if you're somebody that gets lost when you're counting, watching me try to crochet just is hilarious because I go one, two, three, what do I need from Tesco's? When are the kids coming for the tea? And then I completely lose it. So I'm gonna go quite a well account because my brain just goes off on different tangents. So we'll come in 60 first. So I'm just gonna count. Right, 60. Did I? No, I'm ignoring Andrew. He's saying I think you did 61. I think I did 60. Did I do 60? Put your thumbs up if I did 60. Ha! Ha! Man in the sky. <laughs> now I'm going to go up 50. Right, so I've gone in and up, okay? Now, there is a way that you can do it where you align two lines and then move it across, but to be honest, it's a faff. And if I make it quicker to do it, it becomes more complicated and then you get lost. So I'm gonna do it as simply as we possibly can. It might take a few seconds longer, but it's easier to learn it that way. And then as you get to know your scan and cut more, you can then reduce the steps. But for now, I'm gonna do the, the long way around, if you like, because it's more logical. It's when you know the shortcuts that you can speed it up, but I'd rather do it logically to start with. So what I'm going to do is I want this second line on this side, but in exactly the same place of this side. If I don't group the rectangle and this line first, when I come to align it, that line will move. So the next thing you need to do is group that rectangle and that line so it's one shape. And then when you align the other line, it doesn't all move. So we've done that bit and we're gonna group it. So to do that, we press okay. We multiple select part of the mat again, because we've still got this other straight line, remember? And we drag it across there so it can't see it. As soon as it can't see it, it ignores it. So now when I press OK, it's just the rectangle and that line. And then I'm gonna press OK, go into Object Edit and Group. So now that's one piece. Repeat with the second straight line, but align to the bottom and the right. So my straight line's there. So we go multiple select, everything on the mat, and we press OK. We go to our directional arrow buttons because we're moving. So we click on there, we go up to the top and we align it to the bottom and to the right. So it's then moved that rectangle, okay? So press okay and when you've, when you've multiple selected something, you need to tap the screen to release the shapes. So if it doesn't look like anything is happening, it is, it's just that the rectangle is now on top of that line. So we use these arrows, which are our select arrows, to move it to that line. And we do exactly the same thing there. So we, we come in 60 and we go up 50. So we're gonna do that a bit again. So directional arrow buttons bring up those nudge symbols and we're gonna do this again. So that's 60 in, 50 up. Okay. 
there we go so we're now in the right place so now what we're going to do is group that together okay so we press ok we multiple select everything on the mat this time because we want the original shape with the original line and your second line and then we press multiple select everything on the mat press ok go to object edit and group it together so now i can move this around and it's all one piece so if you ever wanted to do a card front that had little slits in it that you can thread a ribbon through or a piece of card through you can do it it's knowing if you didn't know that each nudge was half a millimeter then that would be really difficult because you'd be trying to line it up and gauge whether it was even or not but because you do it's it's easy the other way you could do it is bring on a rectangle and then bring on a square that is 60 mil narrower which will give you your 30 mil on one side and your 30 mil on another and then put your lines on top of that but to be honest for the sake of a bit of counting it's easy to do that right we've got a couple of questions what are the questions Andrew please yep yep right so Wendy's asking when you've grouped something and you move it around can you then ungroup it yes you absolutely can as long as you haven't saved it first if you've saved it and recalled it you can't then ungroup it however if you send it into canvas workspace it will ungroup so to ungroup it now all i would do is go tap ungroup and tap the screen to release the shapes and then it's gone to the next shape which is the rectangle with the other line in it and you can ungroup that and tap that shape so now when i do my select arrows you can see i've got the rectangle the first line and the second line but once i've saved it and it comes up with a message that says contains a grouped image you cannot ungroup it once you've saved it so that might be why so to do that again i'm just going to multiple select everything on the mat press ok go to object edit and group and was there another question andrew please that was it right so we've done that bit we've done the straight lines we're going to select a perforation line now so if i bring this back in we want now which one did i do first right i've done this one first here so i need a perforation line that's going to fit in there now the thing with the perforation line is it cannot touch the edge or this cut line here because as soon as it cuts there a as soon as if it goes that width if it becomes 30 millimeters wide it will act as a perforation line and it will tear so when we're doing perforation lines we make sure that we don't start at the outside edge and we finish before the straight line here so it's slightly narrower here okay so instead of this being th this is 30 mil from there to there we're going to make that 25 millimeters so you've got two and a half mil there and two and a half mil there and it will still fold perfectly because it's not like you're leaving a massive gap and then you've got to put a score line in this is the way to do this bit now there's two different perforation lines on the scan and cut and we're going to use both of them for different reasons so let's do the perforation line first so we're going to add let me just check that I've done all that there we go we're going to do first right so we're going to select the perforation line so we're going to press ok and we're going to add and we're going to go into the patterns and your perforation line is also in borders so anything that's a straight line you will find in your borders also i'll put the codes on of which one it is so when you look into the patterns that are installed into the machine's memory bo stands for border and then it's a001 so it will always have so for example if i went into basic shapes it will have ba so the first two letters of the word is the beginning of the code so you'll know where to go for it so we're going to the borders we're going to select perforation lines so we're going to go right down to the bottom because i know they're further down we're going to go up one two and we're going to use this line now there's a bigger distance between this when I shrink that down, the distance between it will also, it, there will, it will almost become closer together. So we're going to use this for the smaller lines that we need. 
and then we're going to use the other perforation line for the bigger perforation that we need in the middle. So I've, I've worked, um, we're using both. And the reason for that is when I first did it, I used the other perforation line. And actually when it cut it, because it's in a small space, so it's gone from, I don't know, 100 millimeters, so four inches down to one inch. It almost became like a little dot rather than a line. So when I've redesigned it today, I've used that instead. So select perforation line BO002. Oh, hang on a minute. What have I done here? Resize 25 millimeters, select two. Oh, why have I done that then? Let me have a look. Oh no, I'm right. BO, BO0, B002. Hang on, let me work out which one I need. I need this one. I need B003. That's what I need for this one. I've put two instead of a three. We're learning together, aren't we? Right, so we're going to select this one. And I'm not, I don't need to unlock the aspect ratio. I'm just going to make it 25 millimeters. So I'm going to go down to 25 millimeters. And we're going to set it on the mat. Oh, we're going to select two first. So two and set them on the mat. So this is where I'm speeding up the process a little bit now because what we want is one of these perforation lines here. And so that's 25 millimeters up from the bottom and another one 25 millimeters up from that because this distance and this distance needs to be the same on a stepper card. Okay. So rather than moving that one up 20, that one up 50 and then that one up 100 because I will have lost count by then. I'm going to group both of them together. I'm going to move that one up to there. Then I'm going to ungroup it and move the second one up to there. So that's how I've decided it was easier to do. So we've got both of them here. So we're going to select one of them and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're aligning them on top of each other. So we're going to go to edit and we're going to multiple select part of the mat. We're going to drag over this card base that we started to make. Now, you don't need to do this. You can literally drag over the edge of it. And because these two lines are grouped with the rectangle, it will ignore all of those because they're one shape as far as the machine's concerned. So now when I press OK, it highlights those two perforation lines and I'm going to press OK. I'm going to my directional arrow buttons, my alignment function at the top, and I'm going to align them centrally vertically and centrally horizontally. So they're now directly on top of each other. Then I press OK and I keep going until I get to editing the object because we want to group it. So we go into object edit and we group them together. And those two perforation lines are still separate, but they're grouped as one piece so we can move them as one shape. So let me just We've done that bit, we've grouped it. Right, let me turn over my instructions because I wrote it all out as I was doing it. Select everything and align them to the bottom and the left. So same thing again. You see, when I, when I started teaching these classes, I said to you, the scan and cut is incredibly repetitive. And the more you do something, the easier it becomes and it becomes ingrained in you. I mean, I can whiz around this now like, and, and I would never have been able to at the beginning because I had to think about it. Now I know where everything is and I know how everything works and you will be the same. I know you'll sit there and go, no, I'll never be like that. You will if you use it enough. And there's no reason not to use it because now I'm teaching you how to use it. Just a little bit of a telling off there in case you haven't done anything since the last class. Select everything and align to the bottom of the left, uh, bottom of the and and the left. So multiple select everything on the map this time. We're going to press OK. We're going to go back to our directional arrow buttons, back to our alignment function, and we're going to align it to the left and the bottom. So now our little perforation line is there. So we press OK and we tap the screen to release the shapes, and you'll see right down at the bottom there are those two perforation lines. So we want to move this up 50 spaces because remember it's half a mil each space and we want 25 millimeters. So we double it to make it 50, right? So we go up. Right. 
Right, so I've got my 50 there now. So now what I'm going to do is ungroup the perforation lines. So press OK, go to Object Edit, ungroup, and tap the screen to release the shapes because right before we before we tap the screen those two perforation lines were still grouped you need to tap it to release the shapes and then what we're going to do is go up with with the one that's on the top we're going to take that up another 50 spaces so we press ok again we go to our directional arrows and we go up 50. Right, so we're at 50 now. So we've got those two perforation lines. So duplicate and move one of them outside of the card base. So we're going to go OK. We're going to go to Object Edit. We're going to go to our duplicate button there. We're going to ask it to do two and press OK. Now what it does is it puts it, it doesn't put it directly on top. It puts it away from the others. So that's great because we can just drag it out of the way now. And then what we're going to do is group everything else because now we've got it in place. We don't now want to lose it again. So we click on, tap on the screen so that part of what you want to change is highlighted. And then we go multiple select, part of the mat, drag over that extra perforation line there, press OK and go object edit and group. Just before I do that though, I'm going to do something else because I forgot. These perforation lines are right against the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is nudge them in five spaces. So we talked about, if I bring this back in, we talked about this being 25 millimeters and the distance between there and there being 30. So there's a five mil distance, a difference between the two. Half of five is two and a half mil. So we need to move it five spaces in to get it in the middle. So we just go nudge, one, two, three, four, five. Then use your select arrow. You can tap it on your screen or you can use your select arrows and then go one, two, three, four, five. Now it's in the right place. I can now group it. I can always ungroup it. Um, if I'd forgotten, I could have done that, but there's a lesson learned. So multiple select, part of the mat, drag over that, press OK, go to object, edit and group that together. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing on this side. And I know this is a little bit monotonous. You might think, blinking heck, that's a long winded thing. But once you've done it once, you save it and then you can resize it. So you do a little bit of work, but the little bit of work is actually really creative because you're learning your machine and you're also learning how the machine sees things. And when you see the education for Digital Craftorium, you'll understand how clever it is. And when you know how the machine sees things, it makes it so much easier to do what you want to do because you understand the process. You know what you need to do to make that do that. And that's the fun bit. That's just brilliant then. And the more you can learn about how it sees things, the more creative you'll be with it, which is why I can make Eiffel Towers out of basic shapes, because I understand how it sees it. So next thing we're going to do is duplicate this. So we go to number and we ask it to do two and we do the same thing again. So we multiple select part of the mat, we drag over here, we press OK, and we use our directional arrows to get to our alignment function and we align them centrally vertically, centrally horizontally. Press OK twice, go to object edit and group it together. Now we're going to align this to the bottom and the right this time. So we go OK, multiple select. Can you see what I mean about repetitive? If I had a pound for every time I've said this, I'd be very, very wealthy by now everything on the mat, press OK, directional arrow buttons, your alignment function, align it to the bottom and to the right. Then we press OK, we tap the screen to release the shapes and we do our moving up and down again. So I'm going to nudge it in five millimeters now so I don't forget again. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to go up 50. Okay, 
on there. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to object edit and ungroup and tap the screen to release the shapes. Now I can go up another 50. So I've now got my two sets of perforation lines. Now I'm going to group it together. But just before I do, I'm going to duplicate it one more time. So I'm going to go, OK, oh, edit, object edit, number two, and press OK. You can go back and use the perforation line again and start again and make that if that's easier for you, because you might forget that it's not, you need to drag your arrow over, whatever works for you. And I might forget as well, so it might just be fun watching me make a mistake, because I do that. I know you think I don't, but I do. And that's how you learn. So we're going to press OK. We're going to multiple select part of the mat, drag over that perforation line, press OK, and group all that together. So object, edit, and group. So now I know that anything else I align now is going to work perfect. That's one piece. It's going to work but I do have to remember that I've still got that perforation line there. So what we're going to do now is put this central perforation line in here and then we'll come and deal with these two up here. So this one, I'm going to use the other perforation line for. So this is going to be the width of this. Let me just see in my instructions, make sure I wrote it up properly for you. Line centrally, five spaces, 50 ups. Right, so. I want the distance between here and here. Now, we started off with a certain width and we took 60 millimeters away from it, didn't we? So let's see what our original size was. Let me find my bit on here. Where am I up to? I've lost my space now. Right, I'll just work it from the original size. So we started with 178 millimeters wide. We've already taken away 60 millimetres, so 30 there and 30 there. So we're up to 118. And then I want to take five off that to make sure, four off that will do, to make sure that that perforation line doesn't hit these straight lines. So we'll do it at 114 millimetres wide. And I think it's important to tell you how I've worked the numbers out because that's just as important. So that if you want to make it wider or taller, you know where you're going. So 114 millimeters. So we're gonna press okay, and we're gonna add, and we're going to go into our patterns and back into our borders and scroll down to the right, down to the bottom and then up till we get to our perforation line. And I'm gonna use this one again, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to use the same one. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to make that 114. And this bit's really simple because this is going bang in the middle of your card. OK, so we're going to set that. Oh, not enough space. Now, because of the position of the card base that we're creating, it can't fit a line on that's that wide. So all you do is make it narrower. Then you set it on the mat then you make it wider. So we're going to go to edit, object edit and resize and we're going to make that 114 now. So when it says no I can't, you go yes you can and you just change it so that it knows that it can fit it. Because it, it can fit it but it's taken into consideration the cut area, not the area that you're looking at on your screen which is slightly different. So if I try to eliminate this line here, this extra perforation line now by dragging the arrow across, it's also not going to ignore that one because they're in the same position. So if I move this one over slightly first, then I've got, I can line it up. So if I go multiple select part of the mat, drag over that other perforation and press OK. I'm then going to go to my directional arrows and align it centrally vertically, centrally horizontally, so you see it drop down, and then press OK. And I'm gonna zoom in and just make sure that I've got enough of a gap in between 
that line and my straight line which I have there can you see there's a two mil gap there which will be more than enough so now I'm going to group that so we do the same thing again multiple select everything on the mat if you forget to drag over you can tap it and it will disappear so if you do it and you think oh no I need to do that again just tap the shapes that you don't want included and it will get rid of them for you so now all I need to do is go to object edit and group it together so now I've got the main part of my card done so this one I'm going to duplicate again because I need one for one side and one for the other so I'm going to move that one out of the way so let's move that over to the side because we're going to deal with this one first and we're going to put this over here so now what we're going to do is multiple select this is the bit that we're doing now these back pieces here okay so we're going to multiple select part of the mat drag over that one and this time what we're going to do is we're going to align it centrally vertically and horizontal well centrally horizontally so it drops down to the same level as the perforation line we've just put in and to the left and then we're going to nudge it up 50 spaces rather than starting at the bottom or the top because that would be a lot of counting so I know that it's 25 mil from that middle to there because I've created it that way and that distance there needs to be the same as the distance at the bottom of your card so it took a bit of working out and I'm, I'm terrible because I don't have pictures in my head and I didn't have a stepper card either so I thought you know what draw it out so if you're somebody like me that can't picture what something looks like if you don't have that mind's eye part in your brain then draw it out and it worked I got it I, I, the first time I did it I put the perforation line across there I didn't realize it needed to come in the middle but second time I worked it out so it's really cool so we're now going to um, select part of the mat drag over there and we're going to align this so directional arrows again alignment function we're going to align it centrally horizontally so it puts it in the middle if I do it centrally vertically it'll put it here and I don't want that what I want is to align it to the left okay so it's now directly in line there with that middle like that so now I'm going to tap the screen to release the shapes I'm going to use my select arrows to get the correct perforation line and I'm going to move that up 50 spaces so directional arrows and five in uh, four in because we aren't we did we do four no five in one two three four five there we go so now that's in the perfect position so now we're going to group that bit and I know it might seem like I'm never going to be able to do this you will because what I'm going to do is write out literal step by steps for you so you will follow it literally okay and then you'll do it and how how thrilled with yourself will you be when you've done it because this is quite complicated this is understanding the machine's brain and making your brain work like that does and honestly it's a quite a sense of achievement when you've done it so please try it so multiple select part of the mat again because we don't want that bit we're going to press ok and we're going to group it together object edit and group and now we're going to do the same with this perforation line and then we're done so we multiple select everything that's on the mat press ok go to our directional arrow buttons and our alignment function align everything centrally horizontally but this time to the right and then we're going to press ok we're going to move it in five spaces one two three oh hang on tap the screen now because i didn't tap the screen it didn't release the shape so it moved everything over tap the screen to release the shapes use your select arrow nudge it across one two three four five and then 50 up and if i just zoom in for you you'll see that that's perfectly in line with the top of that cut line so we press OK, 
and then we multiple select everything that's on the mat, press OK, go to Object, Edit and group it together. And now you've created your stepper card. Now, it does take a little bit of thought and it takes a little bit of doing and working out, but that's why I'm here. So what you can do now is cut that and you will just cut it all in one go and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So when you're doing your stepper card, the way that you fold it is on your front, your bottom perforation lines here, they, they are always a mountain fold. So the card folds backwards. And then this second one is a valley fold and you do the same on both sides. The perforation lines on the left and the right at the back of it, because these were further back, go as a mountain fold and so does the perforation in the middle. So when you then fold it all and crease it, you've got a perfect stepper card. I'm just gonna turn that around and stand it up so that you can see like that. So you've created your own stepper card. Now what's really cool is if you wanted to put an aperture in the middle of that, you can do. So I might teach you that on the next bit because I don't want to go too far with it because it might just you might just go, oh, it's too much information, too much information. So I'm going to teach you how to do that next time because that's really cool too. What I'm going to teach you next is how to make the matte layers for this because that's important. So I'm just going to bring in one that I was doing for my Quirky Bird the other day. So I want a matte layer for this bit here. So a perfect matte layer that's going to sit on there perfect matte layer that's going to sit on top of that. Another matte layer that's going to sit on the top of that. And then your rectangle that's going to sit on the top. And I've covered, done that perfectly at that size because I just wanted that black bit out here. So absolutely we can do our mats and layers. So let me just find where I had done my mats and layers instructions. Here we go. So what you need to do is measure, and I know it's measuring again, but it means that you can get perfect mats and layers. So you're going to measure from the top of here to the bottom of here, okay? So we get our ruler and we just, it's to, measuring is just to number the number of people that I've taught over the years have gone, I can't measure. All you're doing is putting one line against the top of there and seeing where the number is down here. So it's 147 millimetres high, okay? But then we also need to know, and we're going right down to the bottom for a reason, because it's easier. So 147 there, and then you also want this width here, and this width is 118. So we want 147 by 118. That's our first one. And then our second one, you want this one here. So we know that's 25 millimetres because that's where we put our first perforation line. And we also know that it is a 178 millimetres wide because that's the width of your card. So our another one is 178 millimetres, 25 high by 178 millimetres wide, okay? So we're creating like a top hat. Now this bit, I'm gonna save, okay? So I'm gonna press okay, and I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna save it into the machine's memory. It's telling me that it includes a grouped pattern on the mat. That's because we've grouped everything as we go along. You can go through and ungroup it all before you save it if you want to, in case you want to adjust any of those lines, but I'm gonna save mine as a grouped pattern because I'm quite happy with it as it is. So I'm gonna press okay and save it into the machine's memory. And then once I've done all my matte layers, what I'll do is I'll bring those files back onto the screen and I'll save them onto a blank USB. In fact, before I do that, I'll send them into Canvas Workspace and I'll put a title on it and it'll say step a card and then step a mats and layers and then download it back to my machine and save it on a USB. And then I'll delete it from the machine's memory so it opens up that, that space again. But for now, we can just do that. And then you press home and okay. So for the rectangles, I'm just gonna use a square. So I'm gonna bring one square on here and I'm going to set it at 147 millimeters high. So separate the height and the width. We're gonna go 147 and 118 wide. 
like that. I'm going to set it on the mat and then I'm going to go to edit, object edit, duplicate it. So I've got two. And then I'm going to resize that. So unlock the aspect ratio again. I want it to be 25 millimeters high. by 178 wide. Right, so I've now got my two pieces. Okay, so what we need to do now is weld those together to make this shape. So the shape that is on here. And I always do it, and this is just my brain, if you want to do it differently, it's entirely up to you. But I always do it the exact size first so that I know that I've got that right, rather than thinking, right, I want three millimetres off that, so that's six millimetres. It's too many numbers in my head. So I do it this way, you do it the way that you find easier. But the way I find easier is to press OK. Same thing again, multiple select, everything on the mat, and press OK. Directional arrow buttons, your alignment function. We're gonna align it centrally, vertically, so they're both directly in the middle, and to the bottom because we measured from here to here and we did that because this bit this extra bit here is going to overlap so the bottom of this rectangle that extra 25 mil that goes from there to there is going to be what we weld with because when you're welding it's like digitally gluing they have to overlap so we're going to align it to the bottom like that and then we're going to press ok and we're going to keep going until we get to object edit and we're going to weld it this time not group because we want it to be one shape. So we're going to weld that like that. So I've now got my top hat shape that's going to give me my mats and layers. So I'm going to press OK because I'm happy with that. Now, on the SDX, you have this. And this means that you don't need to go into Canvas Workspace to do your mats and layers. So the first thing I want, because I don't want the, the whole piece covered because I want my card blank to show as almost like my first, first layer. I'm going to do an inward offset line because we want to make it smaller. So right now it's an outward offset line because it's bigger, because it's just a regular number. As I go down like this, you'll see it start to change. So now we're going into a negative space. As soon as it gets that minus, you're creating an inward or a smaller layer. When it comes on naturally, it's bigger. So you need to just go to a negative one. And I'm going to do, let's do a two and a half millimeter inward offset line. So that will give me my first mat and layer that's gonna fit perfectly on there. So I'm gonna press okay. It will keep the original highlighted, okay? It always does, whether you do it in here or whether you do it in canvas, it keeps the original highlighted. Now we don't need the original now because that was the one that covered the whole thing. So rather than messing about with it, I just put that one in the bin like that. So I've now got my first mat layer. Then from this one, I can create another mat layer. So I can do the same thing again. So instead of trying to remember where I finished and where I started, I'm just gonna go from, the, from that one. So we're gonna go back now another two and a half inward offset line. Now this time we don't want to delete the original one, the, the one that we started with, because we want that as one of our layers. So you just press okay. The one that it's selected will move. So that's your first mat and layer. This is your second mat and layer. And you keep going until you've got as many as you want. So you go inward again, make sure inward is negative. And you could do a one and three quarter inward offset line if you want to make your mats and layers bigger or smaller, narrower or wider. The tip that I will give you about mats and layers is the finer you do the mat and layer, the more elegant your card will look. So if you're doing something really elegant is the only word I can, I can say, very feminine, very elegant. You want nice, narrow, fine mats and layers. And when it says one and three quarter millimeters, that's all the way around. So it creates a perfect mat layer. It comes in at every point, one and three quarter millimeters. So it's perfect. The wider you do your mats and layers, the more childlike it becomes. So if you imagine having a child's painting, you wouldn't mat it on really fine mats and layers because it makes it look quite grown up. You'd mat it on more chunkier frames. That's what I learned in my scrapbook course. So I thought I would pass it on to you. So now I press okay. 
and we've now got our three layers on there. So I would then save that because you've got your largest, your middle and your smallest. Save that and then when you bring them back, back on, you can delete off the ones that you don't want and cut the one that you do. It's much quicker to delete off than it is to add in because you have to go through the whole process, especially if it's on a USB. So you'd have to add, go into the USB, find the project, find the file, find the size, set it on the mat. Whereas if you've got them all on one mat, you can just drag the ones you want to keep and delete the others that you don't want to keep. So I'm trying to make that a bit simple. So then all you would do is press OK and keep going and save that into the machine's memory as well. And then you'll have your perfect mat layers for your stepper card. And I think that's a really cool little class because it's teaching you about your alignment function. It's teaching you what the distance is of each one of those nudges, which is vitally important. I actually emailed brother and said, "How? what's the difference? And they went, I don't know. <laughs> so I drew it out. I drew a square onto a piece of paper and then I did another square inside it and I nudged it up and I, I worked, I measured basically and worked out that it was half a mil. On a CM machine, just in case you've got both, it's one millimeter. So on a CM machine, I won't need to nudge it up 50, I'll nudge it up 25. So there are some, there's two ways of looking at that. Either you look at it and go, well, the SDX takes more work, or you look at it and you go, well, the SDX is more accurate depends where you sit. I don't mind counting to 50, although I have to say I made myself laugh doing that because I never realised I did this, but I count in sets of 20 or 10, because if I go past 20, I forget where I am. <laughs> this is really bad, isn't it? I'm telling you all my failings here, but I get to 20 and then I'm like 21, 22, then Tesco shopping list will come in. When am I going home on Friday? What have I got to do tomorrow at work? And I forget whether I'm on 30 or 40, but whichever way suits you, also, the other thing that you can do is go into your um, settings. So from your home screen, if you go into your little spanner here, there is a little buzzer. So you've got a little, where is it? I'll have a look. Mm, oh, I missed it. Buzzer. So you can put the sound on. So every time you tap that screen, it makes that buzzer noise. Now, when I'm counting normally, I will put that on because subconsciously I can hear it. I didn't put it on in the class because I thought it might drive you all absolutely crazy. And I know most of you turn the buzzer off. It's the first thing that you do. But I actually don't mind that being on because I can hear it. And that helps me concentrate on the sound. I sound like a complete crazy person, don't I? Well, you know what? Probably am. So that's how you create a stepper card on your scan and cut. Now, I was also asked, how long have we got, Andrew? Right. So I was also asked by a lady called Lynn, and I don't know if Lynn's on this class or not, but I'm going to... I've got a Lynn, shall I save this for next time? I think what I might do is save this for next time because Lynn asked, on a DL card front, how do I put three circles and get them positioned evenly throughout? So I had to really think about this one because this was like one of those that I had to really work out. So what, what I first, first thing that I found out was that a DL and I'm just working, I'm not working with the whole card because what Lynn wants to do is have the apertures so she can put shakers inside it, you know, the little bubbles inside. So I thought, right, so she's going to then be sticking that on top of the card blank. So I found out online, and I'm just gonna draw it out for you so you can have a play with it and see how it works. That a DL is normally 110 millimeters high, like that, by 210 wide, like that. So 220, sorry. So 210 high, like that, and 220, uh, 220 wide. So then depending on how big your circle is will depend on the gap that you have between. So if your circle is 60 millimetres, for example, you've got three of them. So you're going to have one in the middle there and you're going to have one in the middle there and you're going to have one on this side there. 
And then I was thinking, can I use pattern interval? No, because that's not enough. It doesn't go high enough. So how do I work it out? So logically, this is 60 from here to here. And this is 60 from here to here. And this is 60 from here to here. Could be 50, could be 40, could be 57, doesn't matter. So I've now got 60, 120, 180 of that space taken up with my circles. So three circles. So if I take 180 from the width, I'm left with 40 millimetres. So that means 40 millimetres spare for that, that, the distance of those three away from the distance of that. Now, when I'm creating my distances, I need this gap here. So I need a space there, a space there, a space there, and a space there. So the way that I would do it is I would bring my center circle on and I would align that centrally vertically and centrally horizontally so I know that that's in the right place. I would then duplicate that and have three of those on top of each other. So I have three of them here. And then all you need to do is one at a time, nudge that over. So I've got 40 millimeters. So 10 there, 10 there, 10 there, and 10 there. Because I've got four spaces that I need a gap in. So that's going to be 10, that's going to be 10, that's going to be 10, and that's going to be 10, because that's 40 divided by 4. So all I do is nudge that one over 20 spaces and then nudge the other one over that way 20 spaces. And it's, it's working things out like that, because I was like, right, do I put the circles in a rectangle and then line them up and then remove the rectangles? Do I do it with a pattern interval? And then I don't, just drew it out. And as soon as I drew it out and put the measurements in, that's when it makes sense. Because trying to hold that in your head is quite difficult, especially when you haven't got pictures and you can't see it. So this was the easiest way of working it out. So if we did it so that these were 50 instead of 60, you've then got an extra 30 millimeters to play with. So you've then got 70. So you divide 70 by four and it might not be pinpoint accurate, but you know what? You're not gonna notice a fraction of a millimeter. So I thought that was quite cool as well. So I'll physically do that next time. And then I've also been asked about cutting fabric and I can't remember what the other question was, but I'm going to, I'm working through a list. So if you've got anything specific that you want to see, we are going to go into canvas at some point. So I don't need you to ask me to show you anything in canvas because we're going to do a few classes on that because it's blinking brilliant, especially when you've got something like cutting craft or you really can play around with the patterns because a pattern can become so much more it's really really exciting um but anything that you want to see like this just drop me an email at mel at highlightcrafts make sure you put an s at the end dot com and i might not come back to you because i'm super busy but i will have listed it so as soon as i get an email i'll write a list down and then we can start to build what we want in these classes because there's no end game to this we'll just keep going until i can't think of anything else to teach you so you know when we're not going to suddenly stop them the code because we like to give you a code um for this class is mel so my name mel and then number one and number five that will give you 15 percent of anything brother so that's good on the highlight cross website that's until the 6th of March, so you've got two weeks, which is great. So any mats, blades, scrapers, anything like that that you fancy that's brother related, you can absolutely get on our website. And the winner, ready? Everybody drum roll. Ready? The winner of the SDX 1200 is Mary Hodgkinson. Now, I don't know if she's on this class or not, but she's won a brand new SDX. And keep tuned because we may do more competitions as we're going along. It's very exciting. And keep checking out our Facebook page because that's where that's where um, the competition was. That's where they'll be. So highlight crafts. So go and enjoy your code. Have a lovely um, evening. And don't forget to join me, please, at six o'clock on Friday. for did Oh, sneaky peek. Look what Andrew's done. Sneaky peek of Digital Craftorium, it's coming back. And if you're wondering why we've changed the name, it's quite sad, actually. It, it did make me feel quite sad. When you type cutting Craftorium, 
into Facebook, it comes up with a warning that it's the word cutting is hazardous. What a world are we living in? Isn't that, it just made me feel really sad, but I'm over it now. So we're doing Digital Craftorium. That's the only reason that the name has changed. But yes, join me if you can on Friday. Even if you don't buy it, you might learn something. So tune in and watch anyway. Okay, take care and I will see you all soon. Lots of love. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you subscribe by clicking the button below. Then click the bell icon to receive notifications for all our new content.